Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Becky. We're both registered dietitians that use functional approaches to wellness, and we're passionate about food as medicine. Now, when we're using food as medicine, it's not just about the ingredients, it's also about the preparation techniques and your cooking equipment. In today's video, we will be talking about the toxicity that might be lurking in your cookware, why we love cast iron pans, and how to care for your cast iron. Yes, the concern with non-toxic cookware is the perfluorinated compounds that are found in the enamel. In fact, PFOA is the concerning compound that the Environmental Protection Agency has warned us against, and DuPont, the manufacturer of Teflon, was sued back in 2005 from withholding health hazardous information on reproductive health, neurological health, as well as cancer risk factor association, and endocrine disrupting compounds, disrupting hormone and other sexual hormone balance. So back around that time of the lawsuit, there was a study that was done that found these PFOAs in 90% of US citizens. So this is a compound that doesn't break down in the environment and can be stored in your body for years to come. Pretty scary. Definitely. And in fact, we talk about this in our 10 day detox program. We talk about how the blood of newborn babies, the umbilical cord blood, contains many industrialized compounds and chemicals. And one of them are these perfluorinated toxins. So even though baby hasn't been directly exposed, that passes through the placenta and can be found in that embryonic tissue. Yeah, and specifically those PFOAs were banned finally in 2015, but there are a lot of other perfluorinated chemicals on the market that are being marketed as safer alternatives. Or green. Yes. <laughs> and that's just not the case. Yes. So Becky and I both in our household want to use non-stick and totally non-toxic cookware, not questionable non-toxic cookware or the new kid on the block right. as far as an enamel is concerned. So we go for stainless steel or we go for cast iron. So this is a stainless steel pan. Now one of the considerations or concerns with stainless steel is the distribution of heat. So you can look for a stainless steel pan that has copper on the bottom. This is supposed to conduct the heat more evenly to get better cooking outcomes. But I will say personally that as you can see from my haphazard cleaning job, I have not found stainless steel pans to be nonstick, and I always find myself having to add more and more fat in the cooking process to try to liberate something that's been stuck to my pan. Yep, and those end up soaking in the sink for like a day and a half if you do stick something on there. <laughs> More than elbow grease for sure. Yeah. So the next level I would say would be your enameled cast iron. So the first kind of known brand is the Le Creuset cookware. Now this stuff is it does cost a pretty penny. It's quite pricey. It's beautiful. There are cheaper counterparts, like I found this one at Target, and it was, I think, around $45 or $50. And this is a nice big uh, stew pot for stews. But even so, with the enamel, I find that the cast iron, when you season it appropriately and when you treat it appropriately, which we'll cover with you guys in a moment, is the best nonstick because the lipids, the fats that you apply to your pan, give a nice catch and play with the foods that you're using. And that porous nature really provides a true non-toxic nonstick. Yes, I couldn't even tell you the last time I used any of my other pans. Honestly, my cast iron lives on the stovetop, and that's just what I use. Me and I too. love how affordable they are, too. Yes. This is Lodge brand out of Texas, so we have to rep them. And um, what I love about the cast irons as well is flexibility of your equipment, if you will, or what you're using as your utensil in the pan. If you're using a nonstick pan, be mindful that you're putting yourself at additional risk if you use metal. You know, those scratches at the pan liberate those perfluorinated compounds and are going to leach more of that into your food. And that's why it's recommended to use spatulas, like a rubber spatula or a plastic spoon. Unfortunately, how many of us moms or parents get distracted and set our spoon down and we melt tiny bits of plastic into our food, which is also toxic and not a good choice. When you're using a cast iron that is not enameled, you can use metal, wood, or any utensil. And I love that cast irons also evenly distribute your heat and actually hold the heat so you can keep something on the stovetop warm, you know, while you're running around and getting the rest of your dinner ready. 
So now that maybe we've got you interested in using a cast iron, let's talk about how you can use this on a daily basis, best cleaning techniques, and how you can unseason a pre-seasoned pan. So two priorities when you're cleaning your cast iron. One, do not use soap. And two, empty out your pan when it's hot. So I'm gonna transfer a frittata that we pulled out of the oven. Now, of course, this has cooled enough that I'm able to handle my pan. Um, you can see some of those caramelized onions here at the surface have caked a little bit. All we're going to use is hot water and friction to remove the coating from the pan. One thing we didn't mention here about cast iron is that it can actually help to support healthy iron status in the body. So we often see iron deficiency, especially in women of menstruating age and children who are maybe pickier eaters. So you're getting a little bit of iron distribution when you are cooking in that cast iron. And oftentimes we see things like brain fog, fatigue, and shortness of breath as common symptoms of iron deficiency. Absolutely, I think that's a really good point, Becky. So I am using a good amount of pressure and elbow grease to make sure, you wanna make sure that your sponge does not have any soap on it. So I'm using my sponge that does not have soap that I use specific for my cast iron. And I'm getting everything off nice and smooth across here, which I think we're in good shape here. I'm gonna rinse it one more time. And then I'm going to dry it. It's really important that we make sure it is very dry before we apply fat to the cast iron. That's what's gonna to help to maintain that seasoning. This is going to reduce the oxidation or the rusting that could occur from your cast iron. So it's nice and dry in there. And now I'm going to put about two teaspoons of lard. So this is pasture raised lard, a very safe, shelf stable, saturated fat that I'm gonna do about two teaspoons of, maybe even a little shy, maybe one teaspoon. And then all I'm gonna do is rub my hands along it and coat the entire pan, including the sides and this crevice here, and ensure that that fat is distributed and it's ready for its next use. You could also use something like avocado oil here, which is another pretty heat stable fat that could be easily poured if you don't have lard on hand. Yes, most definitely. Now I have found that Lodge as a brand, which is one of the more affordable companies, is now pre-seasoning all of their pans. And this is somewhat concerning because this emulsifier or compound that's used in the surface is likely... I think it's soy oil, yeah. to our best guess. Some form of a soy, <laughs> yeah. and there must be something that creates a texture. Sure. I have not gotten a clear answer from the company. But what I recommend you do is you apply some sandpaper. If you have a sander, actually even better. You just wanna sand off that rough surface, and then you wanna use two tablespoons of lard in your oven at 250 degrees, just like I showed this first step. So you're gonna coat and make sure you have all of the walls coated and protected, a little bit higher lard for that first treatment and you're going to bake it in your oven at 250 degrees for around two hours. And that's going to be that initial treating. So this is a, as much fat, maybe a little more than I commonly would leave in my pan. And then this is gonna sit at room temperature out in my stovetop and be ready for next use. So hopefully this video has inspired you to take a look at what cookware might be lurking in your cabinet and to bust out your cast iron and feel a little bit less intimidated by this kind of old school tool. Yes, and if you're looking to learn more about what other toxins may be stored in your body's fat cell or in your bloodstream without intention and how you can support your liver, kidneys, colon, and whole body to detoxify these compounds to reset your metabolism, restore your digestive health, and renew your cellular health, check out our detox ebook, which guides you through a 10 day detox protocol. If you use the code detox now, you can get this ebook for only $1.99. And while you're at it, make sure that you subscribe down below so that you can stay up to date on food as medicine resources and helpful tips and tricks like this. So when we're talking about toxicity, the word Teflon may ring a bell for you. When we were just, so we'll start that over. The word Teflon may ring a bell.